One of the really, really amazing things about Islam, and what caused me as a young man in North America to accept it as a way of life, is not only does Islam encourage us to accept the existence of our Creator, but also it pushes us to look into His creation at the variance in colors and languages and cultures and respect the power of this divine force through His creation. One of the most basic facts in Islam and most important beliefs is that there is a creator. And one of the ways of recognizing his existence and mightiness is by studying creation. The creator said to those who believe and those who do not believe in the Quran. In the creation of the heavens and the earth and in the alternation of the night and the day, there are signs for people of understanding. After deep thinking, many ancient and modern philosophers reached the fact of the existence of a supreme being who created this universe and is maintaining it continuously. Aristotle, an ancient Greek philosopher and student of Plato tried to demonstrate this fact saying, we hold then that the God is a living being, eternal, most good, and therefore life and a continuous eternal existence belong to the God, for that is what the God is. If people look around them, they will see the intelligent design everywhere and in their own selves. Take the eye as an example. The light reflects on the object and then reflects on our eye retina where it is transferred into pulses to a place in the brain called the center of vision. And it is probably one of the darkest places in the human body because it is completely insulated from light. It never saw the light. And all the images that we view in our lives are formed in this part of the body, the center of vision. We see all these bright, sharp, three-dimensional images in this part of the body. While well, thousands and thousands of engineers in TV factories are trying to come up with an image as sharp, bright and clear, but still they cannot. And if someone claimed that TVs that we have at home just came by chance, atoms accumulated and made those TVs, no one will believe it, but still, some people believe that the vision system came by chance. Same applies for hearing, taste, the way kidneys work, the way livers work, etc., etc. The Creator said in the Quran, Were they created without a Creator? Or were they their own Creators? René Descartes, a noted French philosopher, and one of the most influential thinkers of modern times was led to belief in God through doubt. He doubted that there is God, but doubt meant to him that he thinks, which in turn meant that he exists, which therefore meant that he was created. And since he did not create himself, therefore someone else must have created him, and that one should be the source of life. Can I be the author of my being? Or can I conserve myself at the present time? If this would be the case, then the idea of a perfect substance would be caused by my own mind. In order for this to be, I should have to be God himself. As this, I am clearly not. Infinity is before finitude. Immanuel Kant, one of the most influential thinkers of modern times, who is regarded as the last major philosopher of the Age of Enlightenment, was impressed by all the variations, numerations, and synchronizations in this world that make the existence of an omnipotent supreme being a fact. This present world presents to us so immeasurable a stage of variety, order, fitness, and beauty. Whether we follow it up in the infinity of space 
or in its unlimited division, that even with the little knowledge which our poor understanding has been able to gather, all language with regard to so many inconceivable wonders loses its vigor, all the numbers their power of measuring, and all our thoughts their necessary determinations, so that our judgment of the whole is lost in a speechless but all the more eloquent astonishment. And in another message which encourages people to reflect upon the signs of the Creator in the universe and in themselves, the Creator says, we will show them our signs in the universe and in their own selves until it becomes manifest to them that this is the truth. Bring 12 marbles, number them from one to 12, and then put them in a bag, shake the bag and close your eyes and pull out marble number one. And then pull them all out one by one. Do you know what is the chance of doing that? You need to try about 479 million times to pull them all out in order. So if pulling 12 marbles in order is that impossible, what do you think the chances of having this entire universe come by chance with all its systems, with all the precision, the, the synchronizations, the variations, the infinite numerations? People think that this can come by chance. Fred Hoyle, a famous English mathematician, expressed the impossibility of formation of higher life forms without a creator. The chance that higher life forms might have emerged by chance is comparable with the chance that a tornado sweeping through a junkyard might assemble a Boeing 747 from materials therein. Every evolutionist attempt in the 20th century to account for the origin of life have ended in failure. Jeffrey Bada, a professor of geochemistry and a leading advocate of the theory of evolution, confesses this fact in the February 1998 issue of Earth, one of the leading periodicals of evolutionist literature. Today, as we leave the 20th century, we still face the biggest problem that we had when we entered the 20th century. How did life originate on Earth? After lengthy studies and several experiments, the famous French biologist, Louis Pasteur, refuted the foundation that lays ground for the theory of evolution. Can matter organize itself? No. Today there is no circumstance known under which one could affirm that microscopic beings have come into the world without parents resembling themselves. Oh, I love you, I love you. 